Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, I have a story, you know, a testimony that I like to share. And up until this time and up until this moment of my life, you know, I've been very protective of this testimony, of this experience that I had, uh, more of so because um, I just didn't want people to look at me as if I was crazy. Um, but I know I'm not crazy. And um, this happened in a, in a time of my life when I, when I considered myself to be spiritually dead. Um, so uh, if you have very sensitive ears, if you, um, if you have like a very, how can I say it? Um, if you have a fear of, you know, of things that are uh, spiritual, like such as uh, things of the demonic or paranormal, um, I, I really, really recommend that you, you probably don't listen to it. If, if you, if it's going to cause you, you know, some type of, uh, you know, harm or, uh, to your spiritual life, you know, because I know that s certain stories can be kind of uncomfortable and sometimes people can't handle certain things. So I'm really just recommending, uh, you know, that because what I'm about to say is going to be, uh, it's going to be upfront, you know, it's, it's going to be very transparent and I can't hold anything back. So, and I just really would just want to get on with my testimony, but I'm, I am going to let you know that if you have sensitive ears or if you're very fearful, or are you uneducated about things of the demonic or paranormal uh, um, experiences or activities, then I really would recommend that you just don't watch the testimony because I don't want you to be confused and I don't really want you to be harmed. Um, okay, so I'm going to get into this testimony. Uh, when I was younger, you know, um, I was in high school and there was a certain female or whatever that I had, you know, dreamt about. Um, a couple times. Um, she's a West Indian female. She she was born in the um, in the islands. You know so that's why I say she's West Indian. Um, and I had a you know a couple of dreams about her. You know I never really paid no attention to her. You know when I was in school, but uh, after these dreams, you know uh, it kind of made me focus more on her. W one of the dreams that I had, you know, about her. You know, like I, I dreamt that I was you know, like chasing her through this through this building. It seemed like a skyscraper building. She got up to the top of the building. And it's almost like she wanted to jump and she looked back at me, you know, and then the dream was over. And, um, you know, I never really thought much of this female until that dream, you know. And then um, another dream I had about her in this weird, you know, in this dream, I had a dream that uh, in this dream, I was basically holding her by her hair and I was dragging her like throughout the house, you know? And I was like, man, um, when I woke up from that dream, I was like, man, why do I keep on dreaming about this female? But the dreams kind of drew me more to her. So when I seen her in school, you know, I paid more attention to her. Um, and I just can't help it. It was like, I don't know why I was paying more attention to her. It was just like the dreams. I felt as if maybe the dreams was a way of her communicating to me, you know, something. So, um, you know, it's, it's very weird that, um, the semester of my senior year in high school, I ended up taking, you know, a class with her. Um, and we sat right next to each other and, um, we just began to talk, you know, um, she was very quiet and, you know, I started to show her attention. Um, and we became, you know, close because, um, I just wanted to know more about her. And plus those dreams, I was like, man, maybe this is meant to be. You know, so I started talking to her and uh, we started dating, um, but nobody knew about it, you know, because I kind of wanted my stuff to be, you know, I wanted to be low key, but nobody knew that we were dating. And I had like a bad reputation with females. Uh, females, you know, said that, you know, I was no good and that, you know, I was a, a man whore or whatever, a boy whore at that time because I wasn't even a man. Um, and like basically, you know, we dated, we dated, but, you know, we kept it, you know, on the DL and, and, you know, as we started to date, you know, I started, you know, to notice, you know, things about her. She started, you know, to open up to me um, about, you know, her childhood and the things and the traumatic experiences um, that she had. And um, she actually revealed to me, you know, and she revealed to me that her father molested her. And she also revealed to me that sometimes he'd get abusive and he'd drag her 
you know, by her hair, you know, around the house. And immediately when she told me that, I was like, man, I dreamt about this, you know? And I, and I felt as if I was meant to be with her. Like we was meant to be with each other. And um, I just felt like I had it to rescue her, protect her. Like I had to be that rescuer for her and that protector. And, you know, we dated, you know, um, for several years on, you know, on and off. Um, and I remember a particular dream that I had. She was in a dream. I was walking, you know, with her across a bridge. It was me and her and we was walking across a bridge. And that there, there was this fe female. He was a very strong female. I mean, I'm sorry, a very strong male in the dream. And he was on the bridge and he didn't want us to cross over the other side. And I was like, I told her to get behind me and he was trying to fight me. You know, he didn't want us to cross against the other side. So he was trying to fight me. And, um, you know, uh, I woke up from the dream or whatever. When I, like in a dream, we fought, you know, we got very physical or whatever. And I woke up from the dream and uh, I remember having um, a pain in my back or whatever. So um, when I woke up from the dream or whatever, I had this pain in my back and I went to the mirror and I had three scratches, you know, across my, my back or whatever. And it was weird because I knew, you know, I didn't, I, I knew I didn't scrape myself on the bed while I was sleeping, you know, cause you know, I'm, the mattress has cushion or whatever. So I know, I knew that I didn't scrape myself, an in, in, you know, I know no incident didn't occur while I was sleeping. And the only thing I could think about was that very, that, that dream that I had about her or whatever. So I thought, I really thought nothing of it, honestly, like I brushed it to the back of my mind, you know, how I got that, that, that scratch on my back. But the weird thing about it is that when I took her home or whatever, because we were we were sleeping together and we were, I say, fornicating or whatever. But when I took when I took her home or whatever, um, I took her home and her mother wanted to speak with me. And uh, basically, I told her mother because her mother was a spiritual woman. And I told her mother, you know, about the dream that I had. And she told me that she she had a similar dream that particular night. And she showed me. Um, the scratches that she had on her body. And, you know, like I wasn't any, you know, back then I was uneducated about, you know, demonic activity, but I knew that something, you know, wasn't right, you know, with her, the mother having a similar dream that I had fighting on a male and she wake up and have scratches that were similar to mine, it, stuff like this just don't happen. This wasn't a coincidence. And, um, you know, I continue to talk to, to, to this female, but I wasn't perfect. You know, like I said, I was spiritually dead and, you know, I did cheat on her or whatever. And I, and I did her own, despite everything that I'm knowing about her, despite me knowing about her traumatic experience, experiences with her father and knowing how she'd been hurt or whatever, I just continue to do me. And, you know, I, I hurt her. Or whatever, and uh, like I said, we talked on and off, but it was it was never uh, like intimate, intimate, you know, because I hurt her. And um, like when I went to the United States Army, I started dating, and um, basically, I found you know my my wife, you know, we we was dating back then. She was my girlfriend, and uh, you know, as soon as I start talking to my wife you know, like weird things just started happening. Um, and I'm just going to get very graphic or whatever. And like I said, you have sensitive ears. I don't know what you're going to do because uh, I don't know if you, you can cut it off, but you know, this is going to get very graphic and it could be disgusting, but I'm going to keep it real. Um, when I started dating my wife, um, I started like having sexual dreams um, every night. And some people will call it um, wet dreams. And I think other people might call it a nocturnal emission or whatever. But I was having these wet dreams every single night for a month. And it was like followed by sleep paralysis. Uh, some people would call it sleep paralysis, but I believe that it is, that's a uh, very strong demonic activity that happens during uh, sleep paralysis. But I was having wet dreams every single night. And I knew for a fact that something was going on, you know, I dreamt, it's like every time in the dream, there was a female who was riding me or whatever. And it just didn't feel right in the dream. It never felt right. It just felt like I was being forced 
to have sex with this female and it just didn't feel right or whatever. But I had this, this same particular dream or whatever for like a month. And every time it, it was a wet dream, it was a nocturnal emission or whatever. I, you know, ejaculated in a dream and I know my, I, I knew my body. There was something that I never, ever experienced before in my entire life. You know what I mean? I just knew it wasn't right. And it, it's like it was always followed by sleep paralysis or whatever. And it seemed like I could not get any sleep. And it was really starting to wear down on me. And uh, I told my wife, like, I needed to consult with somebody. Um, so uh, her and I, you know, I did some research. And I was like, I need to go, you know, consult with, with a psychic or um, somebody who can tell me, um, you know, what I'm dealing with. Because I knew that it was something like unclean, something, something spiritual, something uh, demonic. You know, because it, it was wearing down on me. I was starting to feel stressed. I was starting to feel like I didn't want to go to sleep, you know. And, um, you know, we end up uh, going to see, like, this psychic lady. And, um, you know, as soon as I walked into, you know, her, her house, because she was doing sessions and stuff in her house. And, um, you know, the atmosphere, I, it was very intense. And, um, you know, she had pictures of Jesus, you know, pictures of Jesus. She had pictures of angels. Or whatever, and you know, this lady kind of pretty much told me some things about me that you know I never shared with anybody else. And I'm just gonna gonna tell you, like, don't consult with mediums, don't consult with psychics. Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, it tells us not to do certain things. But you know, I was you know I was ignorant to God's word back then, and I was very desperate to find out what I was going through or whatever. So it's like when me and my wife, when we entered into our house or whatever, the atmosphere changed. It was intensified, you know, and basically um, she started telling me, she was like, you need to quit doing drugs. And I was like, excuse me? And she was like, you know, you smoke, you know, you smoke some marijuana um, this morning and you decided to smoke before you came in here and you need, you need to stop that. And, you know, like, I was like, man, this lady is really, you know, on to something because I had Visine in my eyes. You know, my eyes was like clear, you know, whatever. I didn't, I wasn't acting like I was high. I wasn't acting, you know, weird or whatever, but she detected that on me immediately. And she told me that I needed to stop doing drugs or whatever. And she said that, um, basically, uh, in a session, she told me that a female took my name to a root doctor, you know, and I didn't know anything about a root doctor. And then she was like, this person is involved in the cult. They're involved in witchcraft or whatever. And she said, what you're experiencing is uh demonic activity. And basically is a, a demon has been assigned to me. And that's why basically I was experiencing what I was experiencing. And she was like, you need to have more faith or whatever. And uh, she was like, you're sealed. She was like, you know, God, God has already sealed you. And I did come to Christ, but I was still like smoking. I was still drinking. I was still living a worldly life or whatever. And she was like, but your faith, you need to increase your faith. And she's like, you need to stop doing drugs or whatever. And um, she said, this female, you hurt her. And um, she said, she's a scorned female and that you hurt her. Or whatever, and um, she said that uh, she she would charge me eleven hundred dollars for this cleansing, but she said she didn't even she felt as if she, she didn't need to charge me that. She said the only thing I need to do is to work on my faith and work on get myself right with God. And she was very adamant about not charging me for uh, the uh, for the spiritual cleansing. I wanted it, but she was like, "You don't need you don't need this cleansing. You just need to stop doing drugs, and you need to you need to uh, you need to give your life to Christ." Or whatever and all this to stop so um like basically me and my wife you know left the session or whatever and um my wife was like who who you think he can be you know and i like i knew who it was or whatever but it's like i really can confirm confirm it because the psychic the medium lady she didn't even confirm it you know she, she didn't she only gave me a glimpse into what i was dealing with or whatever but she didn't tell me the person name or whatever and um, I, I couldn't confirm it, but I knew, I just knew in my heart, I knew in my soul that it was this particular female because of everything that I took her through and I hurt her. And I know about, you know, um, I know about the geographical region that she stayed in. I know because she told me plenty of stories about, you know, you know voodooism and, and, and things that used to happen in, in, in her region while she was growing up and all this stuff just, I don't know, it just hit me. You know, like it just hit me like a very strong wind. And um, like I said, I really couldn't confirm it until uh, I was actually ha I had to deploy later on that year. I deployed to Afghanistan and um, 
like basically uh when we was in Afghanistan it was you know a lot of people uh there they was uh you know watching pornography or whatever and I made you know I made a dedication I devoted myself to God at that time and I and I, I stayed clear of watching porn I missed my wife I missed the physical in intimacy that I had with her or whatever and I know it drives a lot of men to want to watch porn but I devoted myself to God and I was like I'm not going to watch porn I just want to keep my mind focused on my wife or whatever and you know I was a little weak um but you know I I prayed for God to give me strength and I remember having this dream or whatever that this the same female or whatever that I dated, the one who I hurt and the one who I believed had took my name to a, a root doctor and put a hex on me or whatever. I had a dream that she was riding me. She like we was in, engaged in some sexual activity and she was riding me and she was on top of me or whatever. And she was riding me and I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it at all. And um, I just I can feel that it was demonic. The dream was demonic influence. And so, you know, I prayed. I was like, while she was riding me, it's, it's crazy. I, while she was riding me, she was on top of me. And, you know, I, I, I stretched out my arm and I was like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And it's like all of a sudden this female morphed into like this demonic entity or whatever. And it was like, Jesus. And then like basically the dream was over and I woke up, you know, I was in cold sweats or whatever. And I just knew automatically that. Whatever that, that was going on, whatever that psychic told me about, you know, it was that particular female who took my name to a, to a root doctor and put a hex on me or whatever. So uh, I just continued to pray and I got my faith up a lot while I, while I was in Afghanistan or whatever. And when I, when I came back or whatever, the female was still, you know, she still sent me like she still had my number. So she still sent me, you know, provocative uh, pictures of herself or whatever. And my wife and I, we just had to continue to pray for her, you know, and uh, we, we, we prayed that she'll forgive me because I did hurt her. And, you know, we just prayed, you know, and we just rebuked a lot of the demonic activity that was assigned um, against me. And I just want to just uh, let you know that the, de the demonic activity did stop. You know, I didn't have to go, you know, spend no extra money for no spiritual cleansing. The only thing I did was like basically... Um, continue to read the Bible, just like, and it's funny that the psychic, this medium lady told me to do this. You know, you, you would think that they probably endorse something else like, oh, you need to get a spiritual cleansing or you need to, you know, to do this tarot card or whatever, uh, burn this sage. She didn't say any of that. She said that I needed to increase my faith in Jesus Christ and, and surrender and to stop doing the things that I was doing. And as I started to give more of my life over to Jesus Christ and surrender more of myself over to him, that demonic activity stopped. You know, and I just want to say this for anybody who is watching, man, Jesus is real. Demons are real, too. Um, and my people, uh, if you really believe in Jesus Christ, you know, he gives you that that that, that power and authority. And so you can exercise that power and authority over demons. And that's exactly what I did. And I put an end to that demonic activity through Jesus Christ. And that's just my testimony. You know, um, I just hope that this blesses somebody and this encourages somebody in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Peace.